Hi everyone, this is Vishen Lakhiani with Finer Minds. And I'm going to talk today about a concept that means a lot to me. It's got to do with the way people view themselves and their role in the world and their philosophy of personal growth. See, as I interact with people on this blog or during my speaking engagements, I tend to know this that the people I meet tend to fall into one of three different categories. And these categories all relate to who they are in terms of how they view the world and how they view the personal growth movement. So first, here are the three categories, but before you decide which one you're in, wait for this video to finish, watch the entire video, it's going to be under 10 minutes, so you can see which one best applies to you. So the first category are people who are happy right now, but for whatever reason, they tend to be so living in the now that they tend to lack goals and ambitions and visions of the life they want to create in the future. Happy in the now, but often broke. The second category tends to be the exact opposite. These are people, often entrepreneurs or people who are high achieving, who have massive goals and visions of what they want to do in the world. The next sales target, the next business, the next NGO they want to start. Highly ambitious, but stressed out and unhappy. They are so focused on their future goal that they aren't taking time to be happy right now in the present. And then of course you have the third category which is smack in the center. These are people that in my presentations I say are in a state of flow. They have happiness in the now, but they also have bold visions of the future. Now everyone on this blog exists in one of these three categories. And I want to figure out which one you're in. So pay close attention. Now here's how you'll know if you're in the first category, happy in the now. If you're in this category, firstly one of the first symptoms you'd have is a disdain for anything to do with wealth, money, or getting rich. You consider it unholy, non-spiritual. You, however, tend to be someone who's very happy. You tend to be living in the now. You meditate daily. You love spiritual books. You are passionate about personal growth. And you live life on a day-to-day -day basis. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's a beautiful way to live. But you are completely off balance. Many people I meet in this category are tremendously happy. Yet, there's some aspect of their life that is off balance. Either they are broke and living paycheck to paycheck, or they have lousy health or lousy relationships, or weird judgments towards people who are rich, or people who have done stuff that they don't get to do. So it's not an ideal category. I call it happy but broke. So you might be wondering, hey, if I'm happy right now, what's wrong with that? who's one of my favorite authors, said that deep down inside, we have two powerful spiritual needs. And these are needs that we crave at a pure spiritual level. And the needs are as following. First, the need to grow. In other words, the need to improve ourselves, to learn more, to accomplish more, to have powerful, awesome health. The second is the need to contribute to the world. And this is the, the desire to do something good for the rest of humanity. These two needs drive us. Now, if you are purely happy in the now, odds are you may not be fulfilling these needs as completely as you could. You may not have the visions or the goals to really get out there, kick butt and make a change in the world. You may not have visions and goals of the kind of person you want to be, the new things you want to learn, the new accomplishments you want to be able to attain. So, in a sense, you are incomplete and you aren't living life to its full potential. Yet, so many of us in the spiritual field tend to accept this as normal. Have you heard of Ken Wilber? If you haven't, you want to look this man up. He's one of the greatest modern philosophers and academics in spirituality. And Ken Wilber wrote a beautiful essay called Egolessness. Ken says, one of the reasons we have so much trouble with the notion of egoless is that people want their egoless sages to fulfill all their fantasies of saintly or spiritual, which usually means being dead from the neck down, without flashy wants or desires, gently smiling all the time. But egoless does not mean less than personal. It means more than personal. Not personal minus, but personal plus. All the normal personal qualities, plus some transpersonal ones. Think of the great yogi, saints and sages, from Moses to Christ to Padmasambhava. They were not feeble, mannered, milk toasts, but fierce movers and shakers from bullwhips in the temple to subduing entire countries. They rattled the world on their own terms, not in some pie-in-the-sky piety. Many of them instigated massive social revolutions that have continued for thousands of years. Put bluntly, the ego is not an obstruction to spirit, but a radiant manifestation of spirit. It is not necessary to get rid of the ego. 
but simply to live it with a certain exuberance. What Ken is trying to say is that so many of us think that to be spiritual, we have to be passive. This is BS. If you really, really, really want to explore the full depths of your spirituality, you need to have visions and goals of how you want to get out there in the world, kick butt, take names, create change. So, if you're happy but broke, you are off center. But let's talk about the people on the other end of the spectrum, the people who are the visionaries, who have massive goals of what they want to create. I meet a lot of people like this. Many entrepreneurs are like this. But the majority of them also have a problem. They are so focused on their visions and their goals that they have tied their happiness to those visions. And as a result, they are waiting to be happy. So they may experience occasional bursts of happiness, but more often than not, they are stressed out executives. They face anxiety. They are so focused on those future visions that they haven't taken the time to just relax, sit back, and enjoy the journey. And this too is less than ideal. So which are you? Happy in the now, but broke, or having a bold vision of the future, but stressed out and have facing anxiety? So the second category is stressed out visionaries. Where do you want to be? Well, you want to be dead center. This is what in my presentations I call being in a state of flow or creative congruence. What this simply means is that you have these bold visions, these awesome goals and ideas of what you want to do with your life and the world. And you have these visions for your health, your money, your career. But at the same time, you've not forgotten that life is about living right now and you're happy in that now. In other words, your happiness is no longer tied to your visions or your goals. Sandra Ann Taylor wrote a phenomenal book called Quantum Success. And in that book, she talked about a concept called the paradox of intention, which is essentially this. It's having bold visions and goals, but not having your happiness tied to these goals. In other words, your happiness is independent of your goal. You're enjoying the journey, not just waiting for that destination. So you may be wondering, well, Vision, does this mean that I have to constantly desire more and more and more and have and seek more wants and material possessions and money? The answer is, sure, why not? But not necessarily. See, a couple of months ago, I had the pleasure of spending some time with an indigenous tribe in the Amazon jungle. These people were called the Achuar. They were one of the last people in the earth to come in contact with modern civilization. I spent a week with the Achuar people, and they live life uh, a life that many of us, I guess, would call primitive, but they are truly remarkably happy. They don't have electricity, so they go to bed as soon as the sun sets. They wake up early in the morning. They hunt um, for monkeys. Uh, they live in houses without walls. It's completely open air with just a roof. Their children, their families, their wives all live together in one community. They are truly happy, but don't have many of the material possessions that we have. So the question I asked myself was, and this is what surprised me, I thought the Achua would be people who would fall on the left side of the spectrum, people who are happy in the now but don't have visions and goals. Turned out I was wrong. The Achua people had amazing vision, visions and goals of what they wanted to do for the world. Their big vision was figuring out how to preserve the Amazon rainforest and how to protect it from logging companies and oil companies who had been drilling in that forest and had caused massive destruction uh, with other tribes. And so the Achua had actually gone out and done massive public relations drives to bring awareness to what was going on. They started um, tourist camps where foreigners could come and live in the Amazon, experience their culture, learn from their culture, and also gain awareness of how destructive oil companies could be in the rainforest. They started their own airline business. Seriously, working with NGOs, these indigenous people started an a, an airline run by the Achua people to be able to ferry people from deep, the deep Amazon to cities in Ecuador so ideas could flow back and forth. They do have a vision of the mark that they want to leave and their contribution to the planet. So again, where do you fall? Happy in the now but broke? Visions of the future but stressed out and unhappy? Or are you like 2% of the population, dead center and in flow? And how do you get to flow? Well, I've already given you a clue. Often, you can start getting in flow simply by realizing the end of the spectrum you currently fall in. If you have an unhealthy attitude about money, you are out of flow and you've got to change that. If you are feeling constant stress about your visions and your goals, you're out of flow, you've got to change that. Over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be bringing to you lots of new ideas, interviews, and uh, content on Find Minds to help you get into flow. So stay tuned.
This is Vishen Lakhiani. And by the way, if you like this video, if you disagree with me or agree with me, I would love to get a comment from you. So scroll down below, leave a comment. Thanks.